from a small town in Pennsylvania in the U.S. I came to the U.K. last year to take up a Fulbright scholarship at the University of Sussex, where I did a master's in migration studies. When I arrived here, then, my interest was mostly academic. My focus was set squarely on obtaining my degree, and I never dreamt I'd find a husband along the way. But love surprises me sometimes. I met Jake on my course, and we were fast friends. He's a UK citizen and has spent his whole life outside of growing up, born and raised outside of London, and sitting in the audience now. In the months that followed, our relationship developed, and we realized that we had found something special. By the time he proposed to me in June, my interest in migration had become deeply personal as well. I wanted nothing more than to stay in the UK and begin our life together. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, or at least not how we imagined. Instead, on July 9th, Jake and I were reminded of how aggressively politics can intrude into personal lives as the family immigration rules changed. The government introduced a new, higher income threshold for those who wish to sponsor a non EU spouse in the UK, which caused two young social science students in the midst of a recession some serious concern. There is also a requirement that the sponsor earn at that rate for at least six months before applying. But we didn't finish our degrees until September, just five months before my visa expired. Concerned we might not meet the requirements in time, Jake and I reevaluated our plans. We spent weeks poring over Ukipedia documents, migration forms, contacting solicitors, and considering the best course of action. One solicitor told us we needed to have a savings of more than £25,000 for six months or more to apply. Another told me that the UKBA had made the immigration rules so complex that he found it impossible to give me predictable advice. Our first decision was that we would marry as soon as possible since we couldn't stay in the UK, and we would now have to stay in the US, settle in the US in order to be together. Since my own visa expires in January, and we didn't wish to spend a year apart, we decided that it would be best to marry in a small civil ceremony. Because we pushed the date forward, and the notice was short, my family was unable to come from the U.S. Despite these hurdles, we never really gave up on our hopes of staying here. Instead, we began searching for work. Jake fell, found employment quickly, but his salary fell just short of the stated threshold. We hoped that I could make up this short fall. This was no easy task, since I would have to find an employer to sponsor me. Eventually, though, I found a job, and I'm working at a rate that would exceed the threshold. But there's a catch. My employer wants me to stay, but they don't have a license to sponsor me. So I can't stay because I don't have the money, and I can't make the money because I can't stay. It's a bewildering paradox. UK VA officials have stated that these rules are meant to facilitate integration, which apparently means that migrants must learn English and pay their way. But I only speak English, and all Jake and I want is the chance to pay our way and contribute to this country. I should know that I realize how lucky we are. At least we have the alternative of settling in the US, and we know it could be so much worse. But these rules have introduced un uncertainty and instability into our lives at a point we need it most. We're a young, motivated, and hardworking couple, and we should be able to exercise our fundamental right to establish a family life here. These rules have shattered our plans and truncated our lives, and created the very financial uncertainty they are designed to prevent. But it's not just us. These rules will affect so many people, and they will separate an estimated 15,000 couples per year. In an already unequal world, such requirements produce further hardship in these hard times. The UK government has made it clear that they believe they can me measure the value of a foreign spouse, child, or other family member by the figures in a bank account. We must show them how wrong they are, because we know 